All right, so what I want to do in this lesson is I want to define real GDP and then I want to give you a formula so that you are capable of calculating real GDP given CPI data and also nominal GDP data. So remember, with real GDP, we want to take out the effects of increases in prices. So what is real GDP? Real GDP is the sum of the money value of all output without the effects of inflation or deflation. Now I include deflation as a technicality. We haven't experienced deflation in the United States in a long time, but it is possible for the price level to come down. That's deflation. Generally, we only experience inflation. So really what I mean when I say real GDP is the sum of the money value of all output, but leaving out without the effects of inflation, leaving out the increases in the price level. So what real GDP, if we can do this, when we do this, and we do, this accounts for only changes in production. leaving out changes in the price level. All right, so I'm just going to give you the formula now, and then we are going to calculate real GDP for all of these years here, okay? To calculate real GDP, we're going to say real GDP in year, we're going to call it year N, okay? Now, I've got to stop for a second before I give you this formula, and I need to explain something to you. You have to start with, you have to pick one year, okay? we got all these numbers. The, the table that I gave you, it has 90 different years in there, from, from 1929 all the way up to uh, 2018. Now, real GDP is only a useful number when you're looking at at least two years. Because if you just say real GDP is $7 trillion, $7 trillion doesn't mean anything unless you compare $7 trillion to a previous number. If the previous number was $6 trillion, then saying that real GDP is $7 trillion, that's good. Because if in one year, we have six trillion, and in the next year, we have seven trillion. We had growth. GDP, real GDP has gone up. But what if in the previous year, we had 7.6 trillion uh, in real GDP? Well, then now, real GDP has gone down. This is not good. So seven trillion is a meaningless number unless we have another number to compare it to. And therefore, you have to always have another year that you are comparing to, preferably the previous year. Furthermore, you might want to compare multiple years. You might want to compare, like for, for example, here we're, gonna, we're comparing 82, 83, 84, and 85. And, he, and here's what I'm trying to get at. When you make this comparison, and all you have is nominal GDP, when you want to transform these numbers into real GDP, you have to transform them all into the price level from one year. You have to pick a year, and it doesn't matter which year you pick. Because real GDP is giving you the money value of all output without the effects of inflation, that means that you have to deflate the price level, but you have to go back to a year. You have to pick a year to go back to. And we're not always going back to the beginning, whatever the beginning is. I don't even, just because I gave, started at 1929, 1929 is not the beginning for the United States. And it's probably, we probably can't go all the way back to 1776. So here's the thing. 
What you have to do is, and I call the year K, all right? So K is the starting or standard, oops, standard for the real GDP adjustment. So when we deflate nominal GDP into real GDP, we have to do it in terms of the price level of a starting year, okay? Or a what we can call a standard, okay? Price level of starting starting year. Okay? All right, so here's our formula. Once we understand this idea that we have to have a starting year, we can now understand our formula for real GDP in our N year. Well, what year is N? N is the year being adjusted. Being adjusted. Okay? So let's say that N is 1983. And let's say K, our starting year, is 1982. If we want to compare GDP from 1983 with 1982, what we're going to do is we're going to turn nominal GDP from 1983 into what is often referred to as 1982 dollars. So we're going back to the price level of 1982 and sometimes what they'll say is the phrase they'll use is 1982 dollars. So then we want to uh, maybe we want to change 1984's GDP nominal GDP into 1982 dollars and then the 1985 nominal GDP into 1982 dollars. Okay because these dollars had different values in different years. Remember as inflation goes up as the price level goes up due to inflation the value of the money declines the value of the money decreases okay so real gdp for 1983 is going to be equal to you're going to do the nominal gdp from year n in this case it would be 1983 divided by. Now in the denominator we're going to have another fraction. So we're going to put some parentheses here and what we're going to do is this. In the numerator of that, that fraction we're going to put the consumer price index for year N and we're going to divide that by the consumer price index for our starting year which is K. And so what I want to do now is I want to calculate real GDP for 1983 in 1982 dollars. So I'm going to make a column here and I'm going to put R G D P. Now first thought, I want to fill in this first row. What is real GDP for 1982 in 1982 dollars? Well if I had put, if I put the nominal GDP for 1982 here and then put the CPI for 1982 here, and my starting year is also 1992, I'm going to have the same number here and here. I'm going to put 96.5 here and 96.5 here. Well, what is 96.5 divided by 96.5? It's 1. And therefore, this whole denominator is going to be 1. And in the numerator, I'm going to have $3.344 trillion divided by 1 is equal to $3.344 trillion. Here's what I'm getting at. Is that the real GDP of the, of the starting year is going to always be equal to the nominal GDP from that particular year. The nominal GDP will always be equal to, or the real GDP will always be equal to the nominal GDP if that is the starting year. Okay, it's all relative. We're just sort of picking one year and making it up. And so for that year, those numbers will always be equal. 
But now watch what's going to happen. Now we're going to try and identify the real GDP for 1983, and it's going to wind up being a different number than nominal GDP. Why? Because the CPI is not the same. So when we do this formula over here, here's what we're going to wind up with. The nominal GDP for 1983 is $3.634 trillion dollars divided by, now we're going to have this fraction down here, you're going to want to go get yourself a calculator. I'm going to go get one now too. All right, so I've got a calculator here. Now, the CPI, N is the same as this, that's 1983, right? So CPI is 99.6 divided by the CPI from the starting year, which is 1982, so that's 96.5. And so, I'm going to go ahead and calculate this. My denominator, 99.6, divided by 96.5, well, that's 1.0321204. Now listen, don't round that number. You want to use that number. And there are various ways to do that with different calculators. One way to do it is you could just write down as many decimal places as you can. 0, 3, 2, 1, 2, 4. Because you don't want to round until you get to your final answer. 3, 5, 2. There we go. Another way to do it is to enter the whole thing using parentheses in a scientific calculator. All right, so now I'm going to do 3.634 divided by... Now this calculator actually has an arrow button, so I have the ability to go grab this number. So I'm going to arrow up and press enter. And so I'm doing 3.634 divided by this number here. And here's what I get. 3.521. Well, I rounded the third one. 3.521. And so real GDP for 1983 is $3.521 trillion dollars. Now look how this number is different from the nominal GDP. Nominal GDP is 3.634 trillion and real GDP is 3.521 trillion. This number is 0.113 trillion dollars, which is actually 113 billion dollars. 113 billion dollars smaller than nominal GDP. And what that means is, is that $113 billion worth of GDP here in 1983 was being accounted for by a change in prices, not a change in output. If you want to understand how much of a change in output there was, you'll compare the real GDP to the previous real GDP. And as you can see, we go up from 3.344 up to 3.521, and that's what? That's about a point one, let's see, 2377, point 0.177 trillion. So that's $177 billion increase in real GDP, or increase in production using the dollar value from 1982. All right, so what I want you to do now is I want you to use the same calculation and I want you to calculate I want you to calculate real GDP for 1984 and for 1985. All right, now check your answers. If you did it correctly, you should have gotten 3.75 trillion dollars in real GDP for 1984. Remember, this is in terms of 1982 dollars. I hope that you didn't, I hope when you did this calculation, I hope you didn't do this CPI divided by this CPI. No, we're going all, for every one of these problems, we're going back to $1982. So when you did the calculation, if you didn't get $3.75 trillion, then what you need to do is go back and do the calculation. Remember, you're putting this in the numerator, and then in the denominator, you're doing the quotient of this number and this number. Then for 1985, you're doing the quotient of this number and this number again in your denominator. So go back and do that again if you didn't get it right, okay? But, but for 1985, you should have gotten 3.891 trillion, and for 84, 3.75 trillion.